Hi everyone. Continue to pray for my health, our finances, um, our wide salvation. Always pray that you're found worthy. Pray for um, friends of mine that are just struggling um, for an unspoken, um, another unspoken. Not sure if they want me to say anything either. Um, if you have prayer, please let me know. Letting go and trusting God. 180 Devotions for Life's Tough Decisions by Pamela L. McClade. Dean keeps whining. It's annoying. Still grieving. Now the Lord said to Samuel, You have mourned long enough for Saul. I have rejected him as king of Israel to fill your flask with olive oil and go to Bethlehem. Huh? I don't know. Sorry. Find a man named Jesse who lives there, for I have selected one of his sons to be my king. 1 Samuel 16.1 After God anointed Saul as king of Israel, the king went in his own direction, disobeying God's specific, specific instructions about destroying the Amalekites and all they owned. Greedy Saul speared King Agag and the best of the nation's cattle, and that choice he ran counter to God and then lost his kingdom. The spiritual failure struck the prophet Samuel hard. Sadly, he had to tell Saul that God would not forgive him, but seemingly the prophet hoped God would somehow turn things around and Saul could become the king God meant him to be. That's when the Lord spoke these words to Samuel, telling him to let the past go and take action. God had another king in mind and sent the prophet to anoint one of Jesse's sons, David. Occasionally, God calls us to leave the past behind and move ahead, though we are still grieving. When that happens, we may move more slowly than usual, but we can go forward in hope. As with Samuel, God has a good plan, though we may not see it. David, whom Samuel never wanted to take Saul's place, became a man after God's own heart. Acts 13.22, forefather of his Messiah. I pray that Dean quits whining it. It's annoying. All right. God bless you guys. Talk to you later.